fairy tale so romantic yet so pure? And why are women all over the country paying homage to a show void of sex and violence? Meet the show star Ron Perlman and find out why there is so much beauty in the beast. A special Kelly and Company, Monday morning at 9, live on 7. I have something for you. I wanted to give you something from my world. Something for you to carry with you. A keepsake. <laughs> This chamber reminds me of a piece of eternity. what you really dig about him. uh definitely his eyes his eyes definitely and ladies there's a lot of cloaks over him but that body yes yes, yes. <laughs> are you sure are you sure i'm sure <laughs> what do you think of him? what do you think of it i i think he's handsome he's uh, everything a woman would want somebody to take care of you somebody to feel what you're feeling is that what we all want a knight in shining armor he's always there to rescue her ah, you know ah. Mm. John? <laughs> well, we wanted to find out how similar Vincent was to the man underneath all that fur and cloaks and things, Ron Perlman. Uh, we finally got to him, and when he heard that we were going to devote today's program to Vincent, we managed to set up an exclusive Kelly and Company interview. We had a camera out in Los, uh, Los Angeles last week, and just a little while we're going to show you bits and pieces of how he feels about all the excitement about himself and the program. But first, we'd like you to meet some ladies that gathered with us this morning. Deborah Parker, Suzanne Eubanks, and Laura and Kim Crilly. These ladies are beast fanatics. As a matter of fact, <laughs> during the clip, Deborah was waving her hand in the air saying, Me! Me! Welcome to these ladies representing all of you to Kelly and Company. Yes. You have to be loaded about Deborah. I know. Keep your legs together. <laughs> Deborah? Yes? I was watching you during that, that clip. Yes? From the program. And you were looking like this, and your hand was going up in the air. I can remember it. What makes you that way? I love him. That's it? Yes. Is it, He's what, gorgeous. What? He's gorgeous? Fuzzy. Fuzzy? He's wonderful. He's wonderful. He's wonderful. If, if he could grant you one wish. Is this a family show? <laughs> married lady yes I am what does your husband feel about this relationship you have with the beast I have been pushed out of the bed and shoved off the sofa and closed up in the closet here's your beast Get in. <laughs> I got your beast Boom. I understand okay okay Suzanne what is it about the beast that attracts you well I think he's very sexy Oh, yeah. I think he's very, um, I would love for him to breathe on me. Just <laughs> one time. Very heavily. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> to <laughs> breathe just, just on you? Breathe. Yes. Yeah. I'm yes. very serious. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just think he's a very kind, um, he's just a delicious kind of man. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Steady. <laughs> yeah. Well, Laura and Kim, you are living proof that the beast does span the generations. You are mother and daughter. Uh, do you get together on Friday night? No, unfortunately, I have to work night, so she tapes it, and I come over on Saturday and watch it. <laughs> and then do you see it again, Laura? Oh, certainly. Oh, yeah. like Saturday morning <laughs> when she comes over? Certainly, I sit there and say, why do you see this part? And watch next. Yeah. And here I he comes. Up, and... I want to see it again. You know? Yeah. What? Hold what? that pose. Now, there's here two different age brackets. First of all, Laura, what does he do for you? Um, besides the fact that I think he's extremely handsome and sexy and all the things the other ladies are saying, um, he's a fantasy, and he takes you away from the real world. 
And uh, I, that's, that's my cup of tea. I think the real world is too harsh and nasty, and, and when I can escape, escape from it, I escape. like to. All right, Kim, what does he do for you? Well, I'm, I'm single, I'm not married, but uh, I'm waiting for him to uh, walk up to the door, and then, then I'll solve that problem. I like it, uh, I like it when he runs. When he always oh, runs yeah. to a rescue, and they show him, like, oh. they're saying that the hair and the tape. fantasy, really. Oh. If you met him in a singles bar, <laughs> oh my God, what call would you right do? I would call you. Get out. I would call you. You'd call your mother. <laughs> Sneak him on that back door. So I know what Deborah would do. Yes. Yes. Drag, drag him home. Deborah. Drag him home. Oh, no. Really? Really? Is this the way you all feel? Why? Why? Stand up. He is so sexy. I mean, that voice. Mm -hmm. Can you just die? The voice is pretty good. The same way. He's so masculine. He's so masculine. Oh, yeah. Wow, yeah. Johnny. Yeah. What? <laughs> can't speak, eh? No, no, I can't. I can't. I didn't come this far just not to say anything. I love Vincent. I don't like him. I love him. <laughs> I love him dearly. I wish he was here so I can congratulate him, but he's not. But I want to know that I love him. <laughs> well, I tell we you what, you we're going to take a break, <laughs> and we're going to hear more from these ladies, and we're going to hear from the Beast himself, Ron Perlman, after this, Yay! right? <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Just imagine that you are an actor and you finally make it in Hollywood and then you're offered a role in which nobody will recognize you. We asked Ron Perlman how he felt when he was offered the role of a beast. Well, I resisted the, the, the temptation of... Uh, of putting on uh, four hours worth of makeup again because I, having been through that two other times prior to that in Quest for Fire and Name of the Rose, uh, they're both four-hour jobs and I, I happen to know that there's this sort of unwritten law amongst special effects makeup artists that they think four hours is just long enough to really tick an actor off. So uh, they stick it to that. And um, I had uh, sent down an edict to the people who handle me, <laughs> my beast handlers, uh, as it were, and uh, the edict was that I would no longer be interested in doing these kinds of parts. And somehow they slipped me the script, and uh, uh, I was so taken with the writing and the characters that, uh, that those concerns became, um, uh, they went by the wayside. Well, there's a lot of fans here are really glad that Ron Perlman took that role, but the fascination goes beyond Vincent. Actually, it's with the entire show, and not since Star Trek has there been viewer loyalty like there is for Beauty and the Beast. There are fan clubs and newsletters around the country, and believe it or not, there's a Beauty and Beast convention many of them around the country. Jean Cloud is one of the show's most ardent fans. She publishes a newsletter that circulates the country and the producers of the show read regularly. Linda Lakin knows about the fans. She coordinates conventions where Vincent's fans gather and trade information. John? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not going to say what you were saying. We're joined also by Mr. Eric Rapkin. He is an English professor at the University of Michigan, and he specializes in fantasy and in science fiction. And I have to ask you, sir, what is it that, in your perception about the beast that makes these women bananas? About the beast? Yeah. Well, it's wonderful for the 80s. I mean, he doesn't have a job. He's always there when she needs him. <coughs> uh, <laughs> she's, you know, she's, she's able to go around. She's from the world of the wealthy and powerful. He always understands exactly what she's thinking. He always whispers as if his head were next to hers on the pillow. <laughs> Un unless she's in danger, in which case he roars and he's the king of the beasts. And if you listen to the lead-in, it's interesting. He says, she captured me. And, ex excuse me, he says, she captured me. And she says, he took me to a dark, deep, secret place, and he'll always be with me after that.
you know, now that I'm too old and too married, <laughs> I realize how badly I've blown it over the last 40 years. It could have been great. So this thing, this is a fantasy, and it, is it, does it represent sort of an escape to the fans? Well, sure, of course it represents an escape, but I think that the word escape is usually used as if it were something negative. Mm. I mean, if you're in prison, escaping isn't an unreasonable thing to want to do. And if you've got to go through the grind of daily life all the time and somebody offers you an opportunity to see something that's a heck of a lot better and to feel good about yourself at the same time, especially a show like this, which teaches tolerance and inclusion and good moral values, seems to me that's the kind of escape we all really ought to uh, want. Would you ladies want to go to the underground? Yeah! You really would. Because look at his thighs. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, I gotta agree with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good time. That's good. His thighs. His thighs. This oh, yeah. man has got the oh, yeah. sexiest thighs in the world. <laughs> and that chest. Oh, God. This woman Stand calls up here, girl. me. <laughs> This woman calls me on the telephone. Who? Who calls? Mary Ann. She's Stand my up, best Mary friend. <laughs> she calls me on the phone. She says, Jackie, Jackie. Oh, God. Oh, God. Look at his chest. Oh, God. Oh, God. He's talking. He's talking. Shut up, Jason. That's my godson. Shut up, Jason. She's telling her son, Shut up, Jason. He's talking. I'm like, oh, my God. Those thighs. I, I can't help it. It's the, it's the thighs. Excuse me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So you two get on the telephone and go blah, blah, blah. Yep. When I first um, when I first started watching it, she used to tell me, oh, I, I she didn't pay attention to it until she really got to looking at it. Thighs. Thighs. Chest. Chest. Body. Just Body. Period. Period. I was talking to Lori and she asked me, she said, what would you do if you woke up and Vincent was in the bed with you? Yeah. I said, well, I'm used to sleeping with Beast because I have looked at my husband after he tied one over. And, you know, he kind of <laughs> looked like a beast, you know. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Well, I guess the thighs have it, right? Do the thighs have it? What happened to the buns? Does anybody care about his buns? He's got a long cape, I guess. <laughs> Jane, uh, you write a publication. You edit a publication called uh, Once Upon a Time. Right. Uh, when did this begin? How did it begin? Well, actually, um, I had the good fortune one time to be talking to David Peckinpah. And I kind of discussed this idea with him that I would really like to do something like this because I was such a fan of the show. And what our publication does, basically, is we provide a forum for fans like these to write in to discuss topics or tell how they like his thighs or whatever, you know. And um, we publish articles and, and trivia and a lot of things and pictures, lots of pictures. And um, I was discussing this with David one day and he said, go for it. We need it. We need something like this. You know, the production office needs the, the feedback. But it isn't just Vincent, is it? It is the entire show. It is, yes. I very mean, if definitely. we lost him, and replaced him with someone else. Wouldn't work. It wouldn't work. Okay, Would so it is Vincent then. It is Vincent. All right, it is. All right, what you have in this show is that you have a magical combination. There is a definite chemistry between Ron Perlman, Linda Hamilton. They come together so beautifully. And then you have, on top of that, a layer. You have Roy Dotrice and Ron Perlman, who were very good friends before the show, who had that chemistry. You get the three of them together. You can't beat it. You cannot replace any of them. Now, you wrote a letter. <laughs> yeah, I've written a few to Jeannie's publication. You're a fan. I was at Linda's convention. Were you? All right. right. But now, you were talking to me before we went on the air, and you said it's really not just Vincent. Not it's just Vincent. Not just. Be careful how you say that. Now, <laughs> we're in enemy territory right now. <laughs> I would never say it's not Vincent. <laughs> One of the things I wrote for Jeannie was Vincent, the nature of his appeal, so I certainly would not say it's... But the idea of nurturing affectionate men and the kind of relationships that you see between Father and Vincent and the relationships with all of the tunnel dwellers and how they relate to each other, there are so many layers and levels to this show. But I don't think anyone else could play Vincent the way Ron Perlman mm -hmm. did. Okay, no way. Now, Linda... Thank you very much. Linda, you... Um you sort of coordinate the convention, so you get really down and close to the fans. Why do you think the appeal? Why do you think? 
Why do I think? Well, I've heard all of these reasons are very valid and very true. Um, I don't know how I can expound on that. It's, yes, definitely Vincent's appeal, definitely. Do you think that the producers and everyone listen to a lot of the fan mail that comes in? Do you well, think absolutely. that the storylines uh, reflect what the fans are saying? Yes, they, we are blessed, truly, truly blessed with a production office that not only listens to us, but actually responds to what we want. We're mm -hmm. seeing it in the second season. We're going to, uh, we asked uh, Ron Perlman what he thought of the viewer response and if it was respected by the writers and producers, and this is what he said. We, we try to read all the letters. I know Ron Coslow reads all his letters. I try to read as many of mine as I can, given the constraints of the day. And um, I don't think that we, we take suggestions as much as we, we, we listen to... Um, the voice of what these people are saying and when when there's an overwhelming feeling of something that they need to see or want to see we try to tailor a show or two to that need um, because we're very very indebted to the fans for their loyalty and um, uh, the response from them has been I'm not sure, I've never done a TV series before so I don't know if this is common but uh, the support has been outrageously um, positive and unanimous and uh, um, we feel as though we you know we we owe a great deal to them for that loyalty and so we do we try to pay attention um, we, you can't do everything everyone asks of you that's impossible but um, we try to pay attention to them and at the same time we try to pay attention to what it was that initially swept them in Mm, I'm listening to the moans and the groans in the audience. When we come back, we're going to talk to the man who writes those storylines. We'll be right back with it. Pardon me. Would rejoice to see you find love with someone as fine and as good as Michael. You have so much love to give. Because of you. What we share must always be so measured, so limited. We don't know what the limits are. We deserve a life without limits. There is no life without limits. Vincent. If this is my fate, I accept it gratefully. That, that love story that is unique to these two characters is to me the gold of this this show and when we when we mine that then I'm happy I'm a happy beast you know during this clip I began to watch Marilyn <laughs> And those eyes are rolled up like this. And pretty soon she's doing this. <laughs> yes, you were, my dear. Shocking, daughter. isn't it? I beg your pardon? I said shocking, isn't it? No, I'm just letting my hair grow. That's all. <laughs> Get a you better job. have the thighs, oh, though. Will you stop? <laughs> I didn't mind any of it except the heavy breathing. Now, let's move on. We're joined by Howard Gordon. Howard Gordon is an associate producer and a writer for Beauty and the Beast. Please welcome him to Kelly and Kelly. Thank you. I understand that one of the unique things about the production is that there is a quite close communication between the fans and the production office. True? Absolutely. Absolutely. We listen to the letters and the letter zines and the fanzines produced by people like Jeannie and Linda. And uh, we read them all sometimes at the exclusion of the work we have to do. And, uh, you know, we, 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 we synthesize the stuff. And I think as um, Ron just expressed, we don't follow the, the dictums of the fans, but we certainly listen to them and follow our own hearts as to what we think is right. 
we should have mentioned too that you two have actually speaking communication you've been on the set and I you have, have met Linda already has. i'm going you're going. going yes could you die <laughs> And that last clip was so special to me because I was there, my partner in crime, Sandra, sitting over there and her twin sister, Candy, we were there the day they filmed that scene. It was incredible. And that's, that'll and be being, my special scene. Being on the set destroyed none of the illusions. Oh, no. It enhanced the magic. It enhanced the magic. Sure, sure. Is that common, Howard, that kind of reaction? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the set is a magical place. It's kind of like being in Disneyland. You lose yourself. There are these yeah. huge sound stages. and. It's a magic place. You brought some of the real fan mail with you, I understand. I did, a little assembly. These, this is the greatest fan mail you can have, though. I mean, you just look at the faces, and uh, you have some living letters in front of us here. But yeah, I did. Can I you did. give us a little sample sure. of what uh, it reflects? Um, here's a, a fairly standard Dear CBS, just a note to let you know how much I enjoy Beauty and the Beast. Linda Hamilton and Ron Perlman are masters of their craft. They've given their characters richness and depth and have made a beautiful love story out of something that could have been a cartoon in lesser hands. Mm. That's a compliment. Yeah. That's a compliment. When you get storyline ideas and suggestions, do you seriously consider them to see if they'll fit the long-term plans you have? Well, that's really, um, that's the job of the producers and the writers, and that's, you know, again, we take the, we, we you know, need to preserve our creative freedom, but we certainly mm -hmm. listen to the input and uh and are sensitive to that okay yeah okay marilyn over to you for the lead to the break because you have something very special that oh, you're going the most to... important question is when is vincent and catherine going to kiss no 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 no, no. <laughs> don't want it wait a minute well we're gonna find no, no, ron, no. ron perlman's gonna answer you don't want them to kiss <laughs> they no, don't kiss. Can they just rub? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Rubbing is good. <laughs> After this. Well, when I mentioned kissing, you were the most vehement about, no, you don't want them to kiss. No, you don't. It's the sexual tension. It just adds to the excitement of the movie. If they don't actually right. encounter each other and embrace. That's right. Well, they can embrace. You just don't want them to kiss. They've Why? kissed. I don't. It's just the tension. It's half the. I mean, it's the excitement of the movie. They've kissed in spirit before. But Are you kissed. listening, Howard? I'm listening. I'm listening. Don't have them kiss. Okay. What do you think? I think that they should keep like they're doing and and a little more touching. A little more, yes. a little more of that passionate touching, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and we should have Vincent speak just a little bit more poetry. I, I'd like to hear more poetry. You know, he, when he just goes off verbatim, he kind of holds her hand and looks at her after he's climbed the wall, and then he just, you know, he just talks poetry to her. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> you should be choreographing this whole story. Well, we posed the question to Ron, and this is what he answered. You mean on camera, I'm sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, I, uh, I have a feeling that, uh, you know, we've tried a bunch of things now, and uh, the, maybe we're coming around to the fact that we have to heat this relationship up a bit now because um, we've explored so many forms of these two characters being in this program and not you know, having some sort of a, a physical sexual contact that, um, you know, that the writing might be on the wall. I want her to kiss him for me. So. <laughs> okay, Howard, spill the beans. Is it ever going to happen? Well, I have been sworn to secrecy by the higher oh, ups, so I can't, I, I can't Just do it now, us out here. But, but I can tell you though that we are um, uh, changing time slots March 6th, and that's, we're going to be on at uh, 10 o'clock Monday evenings, the old, uh, which is a good time slot for us, but, forever, or is this a this trial? Is, it's a two-week uh, trial, so, uh, so, Sixth right and the and 13th, call, yeah, 6th and, and the 13th of March, and we're going to take the opportunity to make the show a little bit more adult, sort of explore some more 
adult. All right, you got out of the question nicely. Uh, what's, what's the moans? The question was, is this going to happen? Do you see this happening? I mean, you've seen the reaction here, mm -hmm. and you say you listen to it. So why would you have this happen if you really believe this reaction? Have what happened? Is, have the, uh, them kiss. Well, I didn't say they were going to kiss. I just said, uh, I just said we were going to sort of, uh, I think, uh, tighten more the tension of the a bit. More the touching, rubbing. A little, more, a little more touching, a little more rubbing up, and a little more poetry. <laughs> Ooh, I like that. Ooh. Ooh. But, Jane yeah. and Linda, how do you feel about this? Would this destroy the fantasy? I don't think it would. Mm -hmm. No. His finger rubbed down the side of her cheek. Would I? Would you wouldn't need could a kiss necessarily. People a would faint. Touch, but even with the the kiss, I don't. If it meant something, so many people in this in, in our culture kiss. It doesn't mean anything. Kiss hello. You kiss goodbye. If his kiss and her kiss meant something. Well, uh, the touches mean something. Mm -hmm. They can't just kiss hello, kiss goodbye, of, you know, every third episode or so. Whenever they do it, it's got to be really special. And by, by the same token, it, it's interesting, this reaction of this audience, because the letters we get to, to our newsletter, mm -hmm. this is not the reaction. People are saying, we've had 22 weeks of... Touching. Let's do something about this, you know. <laughs> but, you know, on the same token, it's got to be done right, so that if they do kiss... It increases that tension. You've got to keep that tension. Dr. Rapkin, how do you feel about this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm in favor of kissing. Uh, <laughs> on, on this show, though, the, the mythic archetypes say that they needn't kiss. Of course, the mythic archetypes don't have to come up with something new every week. You know, this is like the virgin taming the unicorn, who's got a nice, obvious horn. And, uh, you know, but all he does is... Steady, doctors. <laughs> All he, all he does is get tamed, and uh, that's obviously what, what Catherine has done to Vincent, uh, whether or not there are some perks that go with that. Obviously, uh, modern, modern television is going to respond to the needs of the audience. Wasn't there a fantasy situation where they, like you were mentioning, they touched his finger and so on? Yeah. Was that sort of a testing? I think that's what the lady meant when she said they, yeah. they kissed in spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, in the... Uh, in the source from which this is most directly taken, uh, Beauty and the Beast marry. But Beast, of course, first turns back into a human being, so we don't have to worry about the relationship being illegal in most states. Howard, if this is so, <laughs> if this is so popular, and we all love it, why was it nearly taken off the air at one time? I don't know that it was. I, uh, I think that's just a nasty rumor. I think nasty we were, rumor? Never well, I mean, we were, we, were, we were an experiment. We were a show that people said, well, you know, we didn't, they didn't think we were going to last for more than three or four weeks. And... Uh, then suddenly the letters started rolling in and the, and the ratings were good. We started winning our time slot and, uh, you know, we're, we've been doing pretty well. So. We're going to take a break. No, we're not. I've got to do something. What do you got Very to quickly. Do? Wide shot, Don. Quickly. All right. All in favor of kissing signify by applause. Okay. Okay. Hold it. Hold it. All opposed to any kissing ever. There's a good cross-section. Now we'll be right back. It is my salvation. I couldn't exist elsewhere. Without this place, there is nothing for me. We've created a, ma a make-believe world where really there are no boundaries and no limits. And I think that that sort of stuff is grist for tremendous uh, exploration dramatically um, uh, whenever you get into a fantasy world then you know y y your hands aren't tied as to where you can go with it okay I like this because I finally got my husband to sit and watch with me and afterwards, it's very romantic, and we put candlelight and everything. So, ladies, if you want your husband to watch with you, you have to pull him by the hair, sit him down, promise him all kinds of things, but believe me, they will watch. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you deliver on your promises? Oh, always. Okay. <laughs> Marilyn? <laughs> As the producer, why would they be changing that to a 10 o'clock time zone? We do it as a family. Now, we have a little nine-year-old, I have a nine-year-old granddaughter 
It sits there every single Friday and does not miss it. Now, at 10 o'clock at night, it would be a bit late for her. All right, you want family. The whole family sits there and watches it. Well, what, or maybe, you want to answer that? Well, I would, I would ask you to um, maybe extend her bedtime <laughs> just a little bit on, 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 uh, on Monday nights. Or, and that's a school night. That's, that's true. a school night. That's true. And I think that's probably the downside of the, the time change. But, John? Yes. I'm still on the kiss part. Okay. I want to know if, when will it stop? If you let them kiss, then won't it go on and on and on? When will we draw a line to this? Well, Howard, I guess that's one perhaps you can speculate. If they ever did kiss. And well, course. you heard, Ron, it's a fantasy show. You never, uh, you know, there's no parameters. Anything can happen. So. Okay. We're going to keep an open mind. Okay. She says, I got it. Fair. This is to the producer also. With uh, Beauty and the Beast, there's so much left to the imagination when the, the end of the show goes off. And I think that a little wispy kiss along the side of Catherine's cheek, along the side of her lip, would be far more romantic than a sloppy hang-on job. Ooh. Because... <laughs> We see sex constantly on TV. We're barraged by it. And this way, it's simple, and it's pure, and it's lovely. And when you, it goes off the air, it leaves much to the imagination. Thank you. Yes, I, we all know what the ladies feel about this, but I'd like to get some input from the men. What do they think about, you know, the ladies? What are the ladies, what do they think? Men the right ladies here, shall I ask yeah, you? Yeah, right. What do you think, sir? Okay, I think this show is wonderful. I mean, I, I enjoy it very much. Uh, there you go. 100%. How about you? How about you? No. Well, we got uh, one for three, Marilyn. What do you think? What do you think? Well, I think it's, it's a movie that is fantasy, okay? And I think that it's great for all these women to really get into this movie. It's something away from your daily mainstream of life. You know, it gives them somewhere to escape mm -hmm. for one hour, you know, and it's, it's great. I think it's wonderful. Everybody, you know, should have somebody that they could look up to or fantasize about. Everyone needs a hero. That's sure. right. That's right. Wasn't a friend of yours on the panel? Oh, my wife. Okay. <laughs> nice uses, right? Uh, yes. You know what would be the greatest thing I would love to do? What? I would love for my husband and I to spend two hours in that cave underground. <laughs> and, but, I would you share that you grow wish. Mushrooms or what? I mean, the, all the girls that I work with, you know, they're always teasing me. I think it'd be great if you could have like a guest for like my husband to come and he puts all the costume on, all the makeup. <laughs> And we spend we have a, a new industry hours. here. Honeymoon, we honeymoon could do the these little booths all, yes, all over absolutely. town, right? Yeah. Make Forget it like the Niagara underground. Falls, right? Disneyland yeah. underground, I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> because my husband is sort of like that. He's gentle. He's very... Oh, well, it's not I. It's true. <coughs> it is true. And he has hair. <laughs> and, but he's accumulating a little more. He has little hair, but that's okay. But I just he had all my thighs. <laughs> well, the lady's back in but it, but does he have thighs? Sure, the man. Oh. Huh? I like Vincent's body, his his, his shoulders. I don't particularly like. I'd like to see Vincent without all his things on. No, not all his clothes off. Just some of his things off. Oh, one of me. Okay, oh, Suzanne. I love that. Do you have anything to say about wow. that? Hours in the makeup. Too. I gotta watch these two guys. They may want to go this home before, now. right? Well, she's really into Vincent. She really is. John. Will the truth ever come out about Vincent and how he was born, how he came into well, being? One of the great things about Vincent is that he's this immense mythic hero, and part of his attraction and part of his appeal is his, the secret of where he came from. So if we do, it'll be in little small doses, and I think that's how you'll find out. We're going to take a break, and we'll be back in a moment with more questions from the audience, okay? <laughs> Wanting is better than having, and I think we can look back to what happened to Maddie and David. Everybody wanted them to kiss, and the show is going downhill steadily. I think Vincent is a gentle, giving love, and that's what we want. 
Sure. It's 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 about romance, not sex. I think that's the distinction. <laughs> Howard, do the, do most of the actors in the show stick to the script? Do you are you on the set? We we see dailies every day, and we uh, and we go down about once a week, depending on whose script is being shot at the time. Oh, the actors are very faithful to the word, and they're very respectful of of what we write. Have you changed your mind about how the storyline is going to go one iota since you've been well, here? Well, yeah, I think I'll, I'll come back and bring some things up this afternoon when I get back. So, uh, <laughs> Make some little notes. <laughs> Absolutely. John? One of the things that uh, I, we all find fascinating about this program is that the star and all of these women are here because of Ron Perlman could walk on the street, at least until very recently, and not be recognized as the beast or perhaps anything else except a guy maybe owes some money to and we ask Ron about that <laughs> playing the beast at least up until recently when you know I I started consenting to do more and more stuff like this where people got to see my face uh, gave me what I always wanted which was all of the trappings of you know being a working actor and uh, all of the abilities of maintaining my sort of uh, private citizen existence so that I could spend time in the public uh, like any normal person could you know with my family and and by myself um, um, being famous is certainly not anything that somebody who's going into the acting profession ever really um, aspires to it's just one of the the uh, the uh, sort of side orders, one of the, the trappings that come with being a successful actor, and it's not necessarily a pleasant thing. Um, you know, it's an invasion of, of your ability to lead a, a normal life. So I have the best of both worlds as long as I can, uh, you know, keep this to a minimum. Okay. I, don't know, I think Walter Cronkite said it best years ago when he said it gets me good tables at the restaurant. <laughs> That's about it. Well, what I find, find sexy about um, Vincent is that, um, his, like what everybody else is saying, his inner beauty. Um, when, uh, when I've gone into a singles bar and I've seen uh, guys that weren't, you know, good looking, I sort of, you know, passed them over. I thought, you know, I'm going to go after the good looking ones. Now watching um, Beauty and the Beast, I'm inclined to include every guy into my you spectrum made you more you know i i'm not i'm not a lot a lot of my friends still say well if he's not good looking if he's not this if he's not that i'm not even going to give him you know uh look at him i'm not going to even give him the time of day now i find that um vincent is is of no uh has no uh there's no racial barrier there's no you don't know what he is you really people say he's a lion but is he really so you you see what's inside of him first which of course is That's all what made me fall in love with vincent is what was inside of him well it's all part of the idea too <laughs> Marilyn? i just wanted to say that the the, the storyline is so powerful that i can actually feel it through my tv and my cat sits there fascinated he just loves to watch the show he thinks he's watching another cat <laughs> We just have uh, time to take a break and come back with more from our audience and from our panel right back. What to do when your friend is a bigot on the next Oprah Winfrey Show. Oprah, weekdays at 4 on 7. I wanted to know, I was... Um, talking to my mother and she told me that as the, sh the episode prolongs that he's supposed to look more and more human that, gonna make no him, no he's you know, he's what he is and he's and gonna he, stay that he's way. gonna stay that way Great. it's not a transformation Great. I really appreciate the show um, the production value in the show is incredible the writing uh, your your literary consultant is just with the sonnets from Shakespeare I mean they have a I think it's a sensuality about the show more than Vincent is sexy mm -hmm. there's there's a, there's a need for that nowadays and I think I don't know I like to see it in the privacy of my own home so people don't say oh geez look at what she's doing oh god look at her reactions 
But I like that, and it is an escapism, and it's a wonderful thing that Ron Coslow did. And Margaret Becerra, with her prosthetic makeup, is just incredible that she can keep up that consistency. Boy, you are a fan. Every week. No, I, I appreciate the show, well, and I want to say I'll, it is I'll a very send, nice show. And do you write to CBS? Is that what it is? I always thought it was. You can write to CBS or with Thomas. Um, well, thank you. Keep up a good job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Consider bringing in uh, family members or an old relationship for Vincent. Um, yeah, we'd consider it. In fact, <laughs> keep, stay tuned. Maybe you'll be surprised. Oh, right. We'll see Thank what, you. We'll see that what happens. Good. Oh, Thank you. Interesting. Is there maybe? I, well, Devin, he, he has sort of his brother, whose who's father's uh, real son, and he's been on two shows so far. So slowly, bit by I bit, we're getting the history. For the female gender. <laughs> well, as I say, stay tuned, and you'll, right. and you'll see. Keep watching. <laughs> John? I get ca caught up in the sexuality of the character, but what I am impressed with is the feeling of the show. I don't know if you do it on tape or film or what, but it's kind of like gauze over the camera, the um, murky quality to the show that's just so intriguing. You can't see everything. There are things that are hinted at in the background, especially with the candles in the cave. There's a great, uh, great. There's a, I think it was Cocteau who did the original, uh, who did a film version in 46, and he said uh, something great. There's no dirt in fairy tales. So the beautiful part is you sort of see this thing through, as if through a veil. And it does. This. I like to know how long it takes to put his makeup on. I mean, it seems like it would take forever. I think they've gotten it down to about four hours in the morning to put it on. And one four? To four? That much? Still? That, still that much. Maybe on, on fast days, three and a half, but I think it's still four. Does he ever get and, skin uh, irritations from that on the face? Well, you saw his, he's got a great complexion. I guess they're, they're yeah. doing a great job taking care of him. And how long does it take to take it off? An hour. So he's up sometimes at 2 and 3 in the morning. How does he take it off? I mean, is there Coke, a cream, or... Does he well, I see him in various, various stages of undress. Yeah, I guess, I guess they do by cold cream and tweezers, and yeah? slowly he's Ron Perlman. Huh. Yeah. Tweezers? Oh! Oh! <laughs> Every hair is placed Every on hair. <laughs> As Howard mentioned earlier, the Beauty and the Beast, while it's currently on Friday nights at 8 o'clock on CBS... <laughs> Uh, it's on March the 6th and the 13th that That's it will right. be moving to 10 p.m., which is a Monday night. So those of you who uh, have missed it or haven't tried it out or been out of the house on Friday nights can uh, give the program a try. Before we go, I'd like to point out that Ron left us with this special message for his fans. I love you for watching, and, uh, you know, I, um, I'm doing my best to... to uh, we all are to to make the show as exciting as as it possibly can be and to test the limits and the boundaries that do and don't exist and uh, uh, I sincerely hope that we continue to delight you and um, that you continue to, to give us a try. And a special thank you to our guests here on the panel. Thank you very much. Thank you. And of course, to all the fans. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to give you a very, very special Valentine, okay? We're going to give you a whole hour with the Chippendales. A whole hour. <laughs> Goodbye. See you tomorrow. Tickets for Kelly and Company are free and easy to get. Just call 298-6161 and ask for your free seats. Any information on today's show can be obtained by calling the Kelly and Company hotline at 298-6700 after 11 a.m. Marilyn Turner's wardrobe, provided by Roz and Sherm in the Bloomfield Plaza. Marilyn Turner's shoes and accessories, also provided by Roz and Sherm in the Bloomfield Plaza. Marilyn Turner's hairstyles and makeup, provided by Robin Manoogian at Heidi's in Bloomfield Hills. John Kelly's wardrobe, provided by the Claymore Shop and the Ralph Lauren Polo Shop, both of Birmingham. Audience gifts provided by Great Scott.